Fourth of July fireworks continue for K State. They add another player this week, and it is RJ Collins from the Missouri side of Kansas City. Staley High School, and this is a, a fascinating addition for their defense where we know defensive back, there have been some struggles this year, uh, specifically at safety and finding guys, and R.J. Collins might fit the bill for what they need. There's certainly plenty of traits to like, uh, and this is one that came together pretty fast for R.J. Collins in K-State. You can see he didn't get his offer until June 25th. It's the only Power 4 offer that he held but he's a track star and uh, some good connections there as well. So, Drew, what can you tell us about R.J. Collins, the newest Wildcat? Yeah, it really did come together pretty quickly. He was at the final k camp of the month of June, June 23rd. And let me tell you, that, that was one of the hotter camps that I've been at. I believe it was like 98 degrees, and it was, it was pretty warm that day. And Collins was one of a few guys to receive an offer uh, from that camp. And what really kind of sold K-State wasn't just the speed because he has very, very, very good speed, especially on the track, uh, but also has plenty of physicality. And I think that that, along with his speed, was probably one of the reasons that K-State offered him. I remember just sitting and watching during the one-on-one -on -one portions of the camp, uh, just seeing rj collins and joe klanderman talk after every single ref that collins took because klanderman was kind of just teaching him more and more stuff and then eventually that ends up leading to an offer two days after the camp and i think that that has really propelled k-state because collins was receiving some power for attention even though he hadn't had offers yet i believe it was a uh, nebraska uh, Purdue, Iowa State, and Missouri have all shown interest in him despite not offering yet. Uh, so I think that this is kind of one where K-State offers and kind of sneaks him in the class, kind of like what I think that some of the other Power 4 schools that were showing interest in him probably wanted to do. Uh, but K-State pulls the trigger, and his parents are uh, actually met at K-State, so that's kind of a, a little unique tie in this recruitment as well. And I think that that, along with kind of how much K-State had been recruiting him because this, again, wasn't just a he camped. We didn't know about him beforehand. K-State had been recruiting him before for almost like six to 12 months before in the, uh, offering him and then leading to the commitment. So I think that that really played a part. Yeah, and you, yeah, they they knew what they were doing there. Essentially, is what you're saying, and uh, got got into this spot where they didn't have to worry about anybody else. Uh, in terms of what to know is him you know, player wise, he's really really fast. He set a Missouri Class Five state record uh, in the 200 meters this past year, so he can fly. How does that translate to the football field? I think that translates pretty well to the football field because you can really see his speed pop right away. Like it's not one of those where he is fast, but doesn't really play fast. He plays pretty fast and plays very hard. And I think that that's something to really admire about him because he it's something where you can kind of see track guys on the football field sometimes. And you're like, why doesn't that speed translate? But Collins is not that way at all. Uh, Collins, they had him, listed at running over 21 miles an hour at the camp that K-State was at, which is kind of like that benchmark that K-State really wants to have. And it's another speed, long secondary guy. Now that he's listed as a corner in the on three uh, rankings, but I think his future home is probably free safety. And we've kind of seen this with Callan Barta last cycle. We saw it with Marquis Siegel in the transfer portal. We've seen it with Josh Hayes in the transfer portal where K-State will get guys that have corner experience and then move them to free safety because in the 3-3-5, the free safety is mostly playing like that nickel spot. And it will be man-to-man -man with the uh, opposing team slot receiver. So I think that having a fast guy that can really cover kind of plays an advantage to the 3-3-5. And I think that you're kind of seeing that with uh, RJ Collins. Uh, we kind of saw that as well with, uh, the previous free safety targets, Leo Almanza and Sirius Stinyard, where they were both high school corners that K-State really wanted at free safety. So I think that Collins is kind of that next guy that fits that bill. 
Yeah, I, you know, and we I, I say it all the time because I think it's just so true that the staff has been good about understanding. Find a trait that you really like, figure the other stuff out later. But in, in terms of how he's going to to kind of fit into the scheming, you say free safety. What is the what would the timeline be for somebody playing that position and also somebody that you know just now got their first power four offer? Like, how long would it take to see RJ Collins on the field? I think that he will need a little bit of time to develop, but he has that elite trait of speed. And kind of the thing that really tracks with speed is being able to play on special teams if you can really, really buy in. And I think that Collins is a guy that's pretty bought in. I mean, he was really disappointed in himself that he finished third in the 100 at the Missouri State track meet. So he said that he really just put his head down and wanted to go all out for the 200 and ends up setting a top 20 time in the state of Missouri all time. So I think that you kind of see that dedication there. So I think that he's somebody that could probably see the field on special teams, especially like punt coverage, kick coverage. And that's a guy that I wouldn't want to mess with on kick coverage because if they're coming that fast and are and can hit that hard, that that's a guy that will probably light you up. Uh, but you really... I think that he's probably a little bit more raw, so he needs a little bit of time. But I think that him, along with Dominic Mitchell, are two guys that will probably play a little bit better than what their rankings will show uh, because they have that elite traits. And I think that you're seeing the traits that K-State wants is that speed. And it's kind of like, uh, I believe it was Matt Rule when they were at Baylor that the Athletic did a... Uh, like a report on like what Baylor is looking at and recruiting and everything. And they kind of talked about how if they were going to miss on somebody, they wanted to miss on somebody that had that elite speed. And I think that you're kind of seeing that with what K-State goes after, because a lot of these guys, especially in the secondary, like K-State could have a really good four by 100 team and on track. And I think that you're, I would pick K-State's 4 by 100 team in the secondary uh, above a lot of other schools on the Big 12. It makes sense. If if you're going to make a mistake somewhere or not get one right, the the best avenue is get a guy that's fast because there's still a way that you might be able to find something for him to do. Or if you know you, you ha- he has to be out there, you're going to be able to make up for it. Like As we know, if you're stronger or faster – you have some built-in advantages to make up for errors, and uh, that's certainly a, a benefit there. So speed like that is never a bad thing uh, for K-State. So they add R.J. Collins. Uh, it, if this thing had drawn on a little bit longer, is the assumption that there would have been more power for offers that rolled in, but because K-State was the first one, he has the family tie, uh, and just decided, hey, I, the first one to reach out is the one that, I, that I'm going to roll with. Uh, that they everybody stays away. Yeah, I think that if he would have drawn it out a little bit more into the fall, he probably gets a little bit more attention because I, I think that the other schools that were involved really wanted to see a little bit more in the fall. But he gets the K-State offer, has a K-State connection, had been recruited pretty hard by K-State beforehand. So I think that it was kind of the perfect storm and kind of like what you see with like a Dominic Mitchell who didn't have any Power 4 offers that once they got the K-State offer, they knew that this was the one that they really wanted to jump on. And I think that that is a big deal because that's, and those are the kind of guys that you want in your program that just really, really want to be at K-State. And especially with Collins, having the family connection really helps as well. Yep, so there you go. R.J. Collins, another new member for K-State's recruiting class as he joins the defensive backs and uh, probably slots into being the second safety of the class, joining. Uh, Dominic Mitchell, who you previously mentioned. So if you want more on the R.J. Collins commitment, head over to On3, find K-State online, and stay locked in right here to KSO's YouTube page as well because anytime there's a commitment, you can get that checked out, get the update and the latest on that. Or if you know it's 4th of July, you're hanging out with your family and everything, and you're like, hey, uh, maybe some of them are KU fans, like, like uh, two rogue members of my family. You say, hey, you guys want to uh, relive K-State landing a five-star? You can go back and you can watch Lincoln Cure's commitment uh, video and also our breakdown of the Cure commitment video on the uh, K-State YouTube page. So there there you have it. That'll uh, be a fun 4th of July for everybody. Skip the fireworks so you don't annoy people's dogs and babies. Uh, 
That's a new dad complaint for me. That's so like somebody that has a dog and a baby. Yeah. It's a really specific complaint, <laughs> uh, that, that I would just, you know, it's, it's very old of me to be like that. And, uh, you know, I don't want to inconvenience everybody else, but, uh, it's, it's been not very fun. Uh, so, but I also don't have respectful neighbors. So if you, you know, if you're going to be respectful about it, keep blowing stuff up. And if you're not going to be respectful about it, I hope that you're in a just rural area or you end up maybe Jason Pierre pawing a finger or something because you, you deserve that. Be respectful with your fireworks. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to be anti firework guy. I'm not John Kurtz. I'm not like, Oh, it's really stupid. I would never spend money on that, but if people want to, you know, just be respectful about it and do it when you're allowed, which for the July, you can't really complain if people are popping them off until like two in the morning. It will suck for me. I, I will be level with you on that, but I can also say that uh, it's 4th of July. What do you expect? Just got to deal with it one day out of 365. So nobody cares about that. RJ Collins, sorry for ruining your uh, spotlight there talking about old people things and hating fireworks. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll see you next time.